The advantage of having lots of books around is I can easily adjust the height of my camera. So we're now we're now at the end of the visualization lesson of the course. And in this session, I'm going to go through three different things. I'm going to look at one of the most important types of plots that we have for visualization, and that's creating a heat map. And I'm also going to talk a little bit more about context. I mentioned context with the passing networks in the last one, but context is really important. It's not enough just to make up some sort of visualization without thinking about like what you're trying to convey and what's very important. So we're going to look at a context and we're going to look at a very specific context with the passing of um, England during the, the last World Cup. And then the last thing, so that was heat maps, context. And the last thing is something called normalization. Normalization, it sounds like quite a complicated word, but basically it just means through dividing through by something. So in the first lecture, I mentioned how, how when we were creating a heat map of, um, of attacking, uh, sorry, when we were creating a heat map of defensive actions, we would normalize by the number of passes that the opposition had done. So we'd adjust for it in some way in order to rule out some teams have to defend more than others. So we, we didn't want to include that difference. So we, we sort of normalized by the passes. This time we're going to do a much more simple normalization. We're just going to normalize by the number of matches that England have played. So we're going to find out how many uh, passes they've played in different areas. Yeah, so let, let's put those three things together. We're going to make a heat map of the number of passes that they make. The context for this is it's going to be the passes that are made 15 seconds before a shot. And then the normalization is that we're going to adjust for the number of matches that England played in the tournament, which was seven. Okay, with that, I'm going to get into the code. Code as usual is here. Start off, import a few things. Now, I've done a little printout here because I want to make sure that we're on the same page here we're not up to now we've just been looking at one match right this time we're looking in the stats bomb data we're looking for competition id 72 which is the women's world cup and this is the particular season we're interested in the england's women's team i i occasionally slip into this i really when you talk about england you should talk about england and not go on about england women all the time um, unfortunately, data hasn't reached that. So it isn't called England men. It's called England and it's called England's women. So I, I, I slip into using that as well. So the team we want is England women, a women's team. And then we find out um, all the matches where they're home team or the away team. I mean, I know it's the World Cup, but we have like it's the, the first listed team or the last listed team. And then I'm just going to print out. We get all the match IDs back from this. And so I just wanted to print these out. So these are the match IDs um, that uh, we find in the database and the number of games, which is going to be quite um, important uh, later when we do the normalization, that's seven, right? So let's find the dangerous passes. Now this code is a little bit more involved. So I do suggest that you spend some time going through it, but it, it's it's got the the same... Let me let me say why why it's a little bit more involved and it's because we need to think about both so if we look want to look at the 15 seconds before a shot um, and we want to look at different time frames we have to be a little bit careful about the additional minutes that have happened in the first half um so there's a few adjustments made in order to make sure that we're really dealing with the same half because the when if you just look at the minutes that a particular shot happened it might happen in the 46th minute that might be the 46th minute at the start of the second half or it might be the 46th minute of added time so there's a few little bits here in order just to make sure that we've got exactly the right passes again this is the type of data hacking that you're doing but the the essential idea is to find the um find the, the the shots which occur in this particular a half we have a shot window here of 15 seconds and so we say if um we find the um we find the shots that start inside that window and then we look to find all the passes that occurred before that window that's the basic idea please have a, a, a look through the detail of the data as i did here whenever i'm doing these types of things i print out 
things. So for example, a little task for you to do while you're going through this code is to print out the times of all the shots, for example, in the first and the second half. That will give you a feeling for it. And then you can also print out the passes. So you can look at like how many passes occurred. So please do these little little things in order to get your mind going and get your coding skills up as you as you go along these because you're going to have to do these these tasks yourself okay so we've now sorted out that we've got a list of all of the danger passes from the from the two periods um and we've put them together and we're going to plot their locations so here is a plot of all of the danger passes now remember this is over the seven uh, matches that england played um in the tournament and I think I think the thing that stuck out for me when I first made this plot is that a slight tendency to play more on the right. And in fact, we can see that from the particular match. I'm just kind of going off topic here, but um when when we plotted when we plotted the passing networks, um we saw actually that Paris and White were out here. And so there's a little bit more play between those two on the right-hand side. And we see this again, few more passes out on the right-hand side than there are on the left-hand side. But because there's so many dots there, it's a bit harder to get a really clear pattern. And that's why we're going to make the heat map. And so how do we make the heat map? Well, we use this lovely thing called a two-dimensional histogram. Now, I've been using two-dimensional histograms almost as long as I've been a scientist. I've been using them for about 20 years. And only recently, um, software has allowed you just to calculate these, these things directly. So I feel a little bit like I'm cheating here because basically all you have to do is you put in the x-coordinates of the danger passes, the y-coordinates of the danger passes. You specify how many bins that you'd like to have them in. And then what it does is it takes the pitch and it breaks it down, in this case, into a six by five. We have five uh, horizontal strips, which are the sort of five lanes of football. Five, five lanes is a very standard a standard way of measuring along a football pitch. It's maybe the width of them changed a little bit, but you want to have five lanes. And then you also think about thirds of the pitch. Often coaches talk about the first third, the middle third, and the final third. And just to get that a little bit more nuanced, then you break it into six. So we have a six by five. Um, bins here. We're not going to normalize to start off with. We'll actually normalize ourselves. So normalize, that's the word I mentioned at the start. Basically, it just means divide through. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide through by the number of the games. Um, and so instead of having to write some code to calculate these two-dimensional histograms, this nice function here, um, which is part of the, uh, the MPL soccer, will create a lovely histogram um for us and then we can plot a heat map of those things so let, let me just run that and here it is and as i suspected i mean maybe it's not as strong as i i originally illustrated it or originally made it out to be but you can see that there's slightly more red area over on the right hand side and what this diagram shows is now i said three things heat maps context normalizing so heat maps, well, that's what this is. Context is that any pass represented in this figure happened within uh, 15 seconds before a shot. And normalizing means that I divided through by the number of the games. And so that's why I get the hottest area where the most passes occur. That happened, these passes happened on average uh, 2.5 uh, per game leading up to a shot and the lowest areas leading up to shot, and maybe this isn't so surprising, are in this area out here. Actually, it's slightly surprising because England in the more recent Euros, a lot of their passes leading up to a shot came from here. This was where they were very creative in, in, in creating chances. So these things change for, for teams over time. But anyway, in this particular tournament, in the, in the World Cup, England were um, more... Um, a lot of the danger came from the right-hand side. And you can immediately see how this is useful for a coach preparing for this team because they can immediately see that, well, is their left back really up to that? Maybe if you're going to send up one of your um, one of your fullbacks, you send up the right fullback a little bit more instead of the left fullback because this is where they seem to be most dangerous. It just allows you to prepare to, to play against them. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I want I want to 
I wanted to say that the next step for you, she should have a look at a couple of these case studies I've done. This this one I've done of attacking play. Um, here is some heat maps showing where particular players are involved. What I've added to these is uh, arrows. This is sometimes this is called a pass flow map. The arrows show the average direction of passes for this particular um, uh, place. This can be slightly misleading um, because often these are very, very widely distributed. So although the average looks as if it's going forward, most of the passes might have actually been out to the sideways in the both in both of these directions. So it's not entirely informative, but it gives you an idea that in this case, Coutinho starts moving the ball forward. But the main thing is that here is where Coutinho is. You know that he's a very focused player around this particular area. Lalana is more spread out. So that's what you see from this heat map. He's playing both on the right and then he's moving off to the left. Eden Hazard is very much in the Coutinho style. But what's interesting with the arrows is they tend to point more central. So he doesn't move the ball. What was Coutinho was just um, incredibly good at this particular season was moving the ball forward. Uh, Hazard is moving the ball more inwards, but also and slightly more out to the wing than, than Coutinho. Ozil... He was like one of these players that, well, I mean, he's still playing, but when he played in the Premier League, he was one of these players that like all analytics models just loved him. And Arsenal were using a lot of analytics at that time. So it's maybe not too surprising they signed him. Here you see his heat map, which is all over the central area in front of the box. This is where he could play almost uniquely for that particular season. Um, Payet is more out on the um, the left-hand side. He was better at crossing the ball in. Long crosses came in from him. Mares, who at this time was playing for Leicester, further up the pitch, probably because of the um, team he's playing for. But again, the arrows point in, so you can see how much he's creating. So a few things to think about, which I'd, I'd like you to, to read about later. But these maps really give you a feeling for how the players play. And this is a more applied one. This is one that we actually actively used at Hammerby. And this was a particularly worrying diagram that we got back. So I've talked mostly, I've talked actually just about shots and passes. Many of these things are very important in defense. So you should have a, have a look at this. What we've done here is the, is the five second rule. Again, heat map, context, normalizing. So um, heat map is this. The context in this case is we we lost the ball. And how often did we win the ball back within five seconds? And the, the normalizing here is a percentage. So when we lose the ball in the opposition's um, box or in the area in front, we don't expect to regain it very much. But this was a particularly bad number for the first 10 matches of the 2020 season. And then... Uh, the coaches worked very hard on improving that particular ball winning statistic, and it went up to 20 percent uh, slightly later on in the season. So this is a, a very clear warning sign. This is not what we want. We don't want to be just uh, winning it back 10 percent of the time in that area. And then later, by working with this particular, you, you don't work directly with a metric, but working with tactics around those metrics, you could increase that number back up to 20 percent. So have a look at them. That is what I have for the visualizing. There is, of course, like no end to the different types of things you, you can visualize and you'll be doing that type of thing. In particular, now when you're going to do your exercise to, to identify a particular player and the skills of those, those particular players, you want to be able to visualize them and you don't have to just visualize their passes. You don't have to just visualize their shots. Defensive actions would be very, um, very interesting to do. Winning the ball back in particular times. All of these things, like practicing these things, thinking about, you know, okay, I'm going to create a heat map of these things. What's the context? And how am I going to normalize these in a useful way? Those are the secrets to making a successful heat map.